Hey Deer and Kids, it's Andy Bergen here, the children's pastor at Deer Run Church. And I just want to say welcome back. It is week four that we're talking about determination. Determination is deciding it's worth it to finish what we started. Now today we're going to listen to a very true story of a man named Stephen. Stephen's life testimony is amazing and he is definitely determined to do the mission that Jesus had for his life. So I hope you get a lot out of this story and you learn a lot about determination and you know how to apply it to your own life today. So I hope you have a wonderful day today and we'll see you next week on week five of Determination. See ya! Everything I need, you are When nobody else is listening to me, you are Before my heart took its first beat, you already loved me, Lord And in your kindness, you saved me, you're all It's Haley again. So far this month, I have been making a lot of messes. Like, whoa. So this week, I am tackling the glory of, wait for it, duct tape. Duct tape is so mysterious to me. Like, how is it so strong and sticky at the exact same time? And there are endless uses for it. Endless. Endless. And speaking of endless, sometimes it seems like a roll of duct tape itself is endless. 
Let's just see how long this thing really is. How am I supposed to unroll this whole roll without getting all the tape all stuck together like this? I've got it. This is just gonna take a minute. Uh, wow, uh, <laughs> I sure am stuck. <laughs> so, uh, this month we've been talking a lot about determination. <laughs> determination is deciding it's worth it to finish what you started. In today's story, we meet a believer of Jesus named Stephen, and he was a man of brave determination. You guys enjoy the story. I'm, uh, I'm gonna figure out how to get out of all this duct tape. See you in a bit. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Acts. Chapters 6 and 7. Stephen was the kind of guy you'd like to have as a friend, somebody you could count on. He could tell epic true stories. So then an angel appeared to Moses in the flames of a burning bush, and he heard the Lord say, I am the God of your fathers. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Stephen was always ready to lend a hand. Hey, let me carry that for you. Or offer a word of encouragement. I know this is tough, but you've got God's spirit to help. In fact, when people needed help, everybody thought of Stephen. See, the new church was growing quickly and there were people who needed food and special care. So Peter and the apostles came up with a plan. It wouldn't be right for us to give up teaching God's word to wait on tables. Brothers and sisters, choose seven of your men. They must be known as men who are wise and full of the Holy Spirit. We will turn this important work over to them. Pick Stephen. He rescued my kitten from that tall sycamore tree. He helped my family while I was sick and couldn't work in the fields. Stephen, you're in. So Stephen and six other men were chosen to help care for the new believers. God filled Stephen with special grace and power to help him do this work. Wowzers. You can see that Jesus is with him. But not everyone was impressed. Rather than choosing to be joyful at the work God was doing through Stephen, there were some people that began to argue with him. No one does something for nothing. What's in all this goody-goody act for you? My friend, Jesus said the most important thing is to love God and love others. That's all I'm doing. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, Stephen had a wise answer for every question. At last, his enemies resorted to telling lies about him. I heard Stephen speak evil things against Moses and against God. This stirred up the religious leaders. They arrested Stephen and brought him before their gathering, the Sanhedrin. I haven't done anything wrong. This fella, he speaks against the law. I heard him say that Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this plague. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He says Jesus will change the practices that Moses gave to us. Everyone looked straight at Stephen, even the high priest Caiaphas. He doesn't seem upset. His face, it's like, like an angel's. <clears throat> Is what these people are saying true? Stephen looked up at the angry, accusing faces surrounding him. He knew these people could do anything they wanted, even kill him. But he also knew that no matter what, God was still with him. Brothers and fathers, Listen to me. Stephen wanted these leaders to understand that Jesus was no small town rebel. No, Jesus was the fulfillment of a plan that God had set in motion with Abraham so long ago. The God of glory appeared to our father Abraham. Leave your country and your people, God said. Go to the land I will show you. Stephen continued the story of God's people through Jacob and Joseph and slavery in Egypt. The religious leaders listened, transfixed, as Stephen reminded them of God's work through Moses to free the Israelites and lead them to the Promised Land. He spoke of David and Solomon and the building of the temple. 
And then he took a deep breath and came to the heart of the story. You stubborn people, you won't listen. You are just like your people of long ago. Was there ever a prophet your people didn't try to hurt? And now you have handed God's promised one, Jesus, over to his enemies. You have killed him. I can't get him, get him, get him, get him. How dare you? Stephen, filled with God's spirit, stood his ground. As he looked up, God gave him a vision of heaven. I see heaven open. Jesus is standing at God's right hand. The religious leaders were so enraged, they shoved their hands over their ears and yelled so they couldn't hear another word. They rushed at Stephen. I'm telling you the truth. Rough hands grabbed Stephen and hauled him out onto the dusty stone road. A young man named Saul watched, fascinated, as the religious leaders brought Stephen outside the city walls under the scorching sun. Here, let me take care of your coats. Still filled with rage, the religious leaders left their coats with Saul. Then they began throwing stones at Stephen. And even through all this, Stephen's last words were filled with love. Lord, don't hold this sin against them. Jesus had told his followers to live out his love everywhere. And through God's power, Stephen continued to share God's love to his very last breath. finally got unstuck. Wasn't today's story amazing? Stephen trusted God and decided to stand strong in what he believed. Even though we don't know how it will turn out, we follow a God who does know the end of the story. We are part of God's big story. God has always had a big plan, a bigger story. Abraham didn't know the end of the story when he moved his whole family to a new land. And Moses didn't know what would happen either after leading the people out of Egypt. Now, we know the other side of the story with how God sent Jesus to ultimately save the whole world. And Stephen was one person who continued to follow Jesus and speak up about him, even when he didn't know what would happen to him. Sometimes there are things you're gonna go through where you can't see the end of the story, but God does. When things are really hard and feel awful and you just wanna give up, talk to God. Talk to an adult you trust about how you're feeling. You don't have to try to do things alone. Everyone will have different things that are hard, like losing a grandparent, or your parents getting into a fight, or maybe you're having trouble making friends. It's hard when we don't know how things will turn out in the end. But the one thing to remember today is this. Keep going because God knows the end of the story. You know what I need to keep going at? My explorations with duct tape. Hmm, what should I make first? A bookmark! Perfect! Ta-da! <sighs> Boom. Crushed it. I'll see you guys next time.
by my side. 